Yo, what's good guys, it's Steven. And in today's video, I'm gonna be breaking down another sample for you guys. Something in the style of someone like Kendrick or maybe even Kanye. But yeah, just like some old school sample shit. So yeah, let's get into the breakdown. So before I start the video, I just wanna let you guys know that I just dropped a new sample library called the Nocturne Sample Library. It's got 16 of my craziest samples using stuff like guitar pedals, analog gear, real instruments, all that. Definitely be sure to go check the description. There's gonna be links for all of you guys to go check it out. But yeah, let's get into the video. So firstly, here's what the project looks like, and I'm gonna let you guys hear what the full sample sounds like. So yeah, as you guys can hear, it sounds super old and vintage. Kind of sounds like something Frank Dukes would make. So yeah, let me show you guys my process for this. So the first thing I started with, if you guys can tell, it's actually a real sample. No sample snitching. All right. And I just found the sample looking on YouTube through a lot of different playlists. So here's what the sample sounds like when I grabbed it off of YouTube. Oh, my mic is muted, bro. All right. So the first part of the sample that I found, fuck. For the first part of the sample, I just found a chop in the sample that I liked, and uh, I just threw it into Fruity Slicer, and I just kind of looped it over and over again, as you can see. A cool trick that I like to use in Fruity Slicers is I'll just randomize the velocity of the actual chops. So it kind of just sounds like you're playing it on the MPC or whatever old gear that they like to use. And so here's what the piano sounds like by itself. The only processing that I actually put on this was just a little bit of Valhalla delay. I just turned down the mix to super low so you can barely hear it. The only other instrument that I added in this A section was these vocals. I just picked them out from a contact library. A cool trick that I like to use is just to go digging into your files and find the samples folder inside of your contact libraries. So this way you can have access to all of the samples that they use in the actual contact libraries dry. I like this because I don't have to really mess around with the plugin too much and I can just mess with the audio directly. And I just found this chop that I liked and uh, I just kind of manipulated it a little bit and here's what it sounds like. As you guys could probably hear, I definitely pitched it up, I think, yeah, like 700 cents. And uh, I just threw it into a mixer track and I put some tremolator on it. This tremolator is from Sound Toys, it's super fire. And uh, I just picked this preset called Full Trap 185 and I actually created an automation clip for the actual tremolator. Basically a cool trick that I like to use when I'm using automation clips is you click on this right here, you go to articulator tools and then you click create sequence and this is super fire because you can randomize you can mess with like the attack decay sustain of it the swing you can mess with how long it is pause and uh yeah i just kind of mess around with it until i found something that i liked other than that i really just use basic stuff like this pancake just pans it from left to right and a pretty simple pro q3 and then i definitely wanted to have some switch ups just to give whoever drums it up like a little bit of variety to work with so i duplicated the fruity slicer and i just created a new pattern that sounds like this and i just loop that over and over and over again so obviously since it's the same sound as the first one it just has the same processing the only other instrument that i added was this little guitar lick that i played it sounds like this 
and that just repeats over and over again, just like the piano. The only plugin that I added to it was this tube saturator. This was just to give it a little bit more texture and crunch and this EQ taking out a lot of frequencies. And then finally, I wanted to have a third switch up. So I pretty much just took the first portion of the piano and I pitched it down an octave. Yeah, pretty basic stuff there. And the only other thing that I added was the synth. It's pretty much just like a little top line melody that plays with some cool textures. I grabbed the original sound from this tape synth contact bank. This is pretty much like the only synth plugins that I use nowadays. I really don't even use Arturia anymore. It's fire for analog sounding synths if you don't have one. My Prophet 08 that I ordered the other day actually comes in tomorrow. So by the time you guys see this, I'm going to have it. So I'm definitely going to be making a lot of videos with that soon. And uh, once I had the original synth, I actually ran it through all my guitar pedals. What's really cool about this one is how I ran it through the mood. So pretty much all those like little like high pitch frequencies and the little like modulations that you can hear is pretty much all the mood. And so yeah, after I ran it through all my pedals, the only other plugins that I added were this Echo Boy Jr. This Spirit Reverb, which is super fire. It's like a spring reverb and this compression just to make everything sound a little bit more pieced together. And then once I had all that, a super important part of the sample was actually the master effects, which is something I rarely do. So the first thing I put on this was this GHG Wolf compressor. And as you can see, I put a lot of compression on it, which is very rare. I used this preset called Punch and Crunch, and then I just turned down the mix to like 30%. Next is what really gives a sample the effect of like a super vintage sounding sample is this plugin called Neil Dwarble. It's a super fire like RC20 alternative. I actually prefer it over RC20 or anything like that. And the two main things that I did is this age and this dirt knob. The age is just what makes it sound old. You can make it sound older or newer or however you want it to sound. And then after that, I turned up the dirt, which just kind of distorts it a little bit. This is definitely important if you want to make your sample sound really old. And then finally, I just took out some unwanted frequencies like the low end, the mids. And so yeah, after you have all that, here's what it sounds like again. And yeah, that's pretty much it for the video. Hopefully you guys learned something. I'm definitely looking forward to showing you guys my process with my hardware a little bit more. I've been really starting to invest in a lot of new gear, so that'll be definitely exciting. But yeah, other than that, be sure to go follow me on social medias. No, you can just pop up my Instagram. Don't pop up my Twitter. Don't pop up my Twitter, just pop up my Instagram. And yeah, I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.